Hey there, everybody. This is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. It happens to be a weekend while I'm filming this. I don't know what day of the week it's going to be when you watch it, but regardless, I hope you guys had a good weekend. Uh, real quick, before we get started answering questions that I get from you guys, a um, couple things. For those of you that aren't aware, uh, my first young reader's book came out. This is a chapter book called uh, Dinosaur George and the Paleonauts. Episode one is Raptor Island. If you like raptors, this is a pretty cool little book. It's sort of fun. It's kind of neat. And speaking about raptors, something new for our catalog, uh, this thing is absolutely awesome. This is the uh, claw, the hand claw from a Utah raptor. This thing is really cool. I don't know, what is the item number? 3545. It's item number 3545 on our website. Uh, this thing is cool. Comes with a little display stand so you can put it on your desk, on your counter. But anyway, uh, this thing is cool. So if you're looking for something really neat to add or start a collection or add to a collection, this is a really cool piece. All right, let's jump into this thing. Uh, speaking of raptors, this first question comes from Declan from Gainesville, Florida. Declan, I've been promising your mom that I was going to answer this question now for almost a week. So I hope you've had patience and I hope you haven't driven her nuts. Uh, and make sure to say thank you to her for forwarding this question to me. He wants to know who would win in a fight. Uh, and he's from Gainesville, Florida, by the way. Uh, he wants to know who would win in a fight, two Deinonychus or six Velociraptors. Well, Declan, those two dinosaurs probably never saw each other, but if they did, two Deinonychus. Deinonychus is quite a bit bigger than Velociraptor. Velociraptor is a very short little dinosaur, and uh, if all you've ever seen or read about him comes from the Jurassic Park series, well, then that's completely inaccurate because in actuality, they're very short. They're only about three feet tall. But they're still incredibly vicious. Deinonychus, on the other hand, m quite a bit bigger than that, much more robust. So I would say that if two Deinonychus face six Velociraptors, in my opinion, I don't think the Velociraptors would hang around. I think they would get out of the way of these bigger, more powerful Deinonychus. So it's kind of hard to beat a Deinonychus, in my opinion. He's an incredibly terrifying animal. And that is who I believe would win if those animals were to ever meet. Okay, Kurt from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Hi, DG. I was wondering if there were any Gigantopithecus fossils found in North America. And if it was still alive today, how well do you think it could hide from people? Hope you have a good day. Thank you, Kurt. Hope you have a good day as well. Okay, Gigantopithecus, for the, some of these that may not understand. Gigantopithecus, I think, lived in the Miocene, and he was found in Asia. He was a giant gorilla, immensely huge gorilla, much larger than modern gorillas. Not quite two times the size, but pretty close, if, if memory serves me. So, um, Gigantopithecus, some people believe that the animal, the Yeti, the Bigfoot, the Sasquatch, whatever you want to call it, believe that it is a Gigantopithecus or a group of Gigantopithecus that have continued on. Now, here's the problem. First, have any been found in North America? To my knowledge, no, none at all. Um, Second of all, these guys are living, I think, what, 23 million years ago, and it probably is unlikely that they were still alive today. And if they were, what are the chances of hiding it? Well, here is my problem, thinking simply from a scientific point of view. Think of the number of footprints those animals would leave just in the span of a year. It would be hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of footprints. So... I'm not of the belief that an animal the size of this thing would be able to survive today with the sheer volume of people we have, with the sheer number of people that are out and about, people that are traveling even sometimes into the densest forest. I don't believe that these things would go unnoticed. So in my opinion, I do not believe that if Gigantopithecus were alive, it would be able to survive without somebody in modern times being able to see it. Uh, and, on, and more importantly than that, how many, of them, of their, how many of them would there need to be to perpetuate the species through today? You know, you can't just have, people often talk about sightings about Bigfoot and that kind of stuff, and they always think that it's, it's just a single animal. But how old would that animal have to be if it's just a single animal? It, it, it would only be around this earth for maybe 30 or 40 years, I suspect, at the longest. And yet for hundreds of years, people have been saying they've been seeing them. So it would require a large number of these things to exist to be able to, uh, to perpetuate the species. And so uh, I just don't believe that's the case. Okay, uh, Landon from Jamal, California. Dear Dinosaur George, my name is Landon and I am nine years old. Nice to hear from you, buddy. Could Alaphosaurus 
Kill a Kentrosaurus. P.S. One of my favorite dinosaurs is Allosaurus. Nicely done, my friend. Thanks. Looking forward to your YouTube discussions, your friend Landon. Well, thank you, Landon, for taking the time to write to me. Thank you for recognizing how amazing uh, Allosaurus is. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, and I can't believe anybody does it anymore, that's my favorite dinosaur. Okay, Elaphrosaurus and Kentrosaurus. I am not sure if these guys live together. I, I, I don't know. I, I want to say, I know Kentrosaurus, well, yeah, I guess they did, right? Because Elaphrosaurus is, is late Jurassic too, I think? Okay, regardless. Um, Elaphrosaurus is a very lightweight animal not designed to take on things uh, head on uh, like that would be as well armored as a Kentrosaurus. Kentrosaurus being a member of the Stegosaur family and having a variety of spikes, not just down his back and on his tail, but also on his shoulders. He's so well armored and he's so well protected that I don't think an animal as light as, a, as an Elaphrosaurus would spend his time messing with him. Now, certainly, if, if a Kentrosaurus was sick or weak or injured or young or incredibly old, then he certainly, I think he would. Um, but the way I, I can suggest it is like, think of a Laphrosaurus as being a, uh, uh, a fox and think of Kentrosaurus as being an elk. Well, a fox is never, ever going to mess with an elk because he's just simply too big and he's too well protected. But if a fox happens upon an elk that cannot uh, defend himself in any way, shape, or form, then a fox is going to see him as a target um, uh, no matter how big the elk is. Well, that's kind of the way I feel about a Laphrosaurus. I don't believe he's designed to go after really big animals like that. But that's a great question, and thank you for writing to me, my friend. All right, I think this is pronounced strong from Cryf Despair Scotland. Stroud? I think that's right. Hi, DG. I recently started watching your videos, and I watched them all, so now I have run out. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. There's like 150 videos, so you spent a lot of time watching them, and I hope you enjoyed them, and thank you for watching this one. I would like to know if you know why, and if, if you know if any of the YouTube channels are like yours. By the way, I think your traveling museum is a great idea because it gives people a chance to see amazing things that might otherwise not have a chance to see them. Thanks in advance. Well, listen, thank you very, very much, and I appreciate the kind words. Um, yeah, the traveling museum, in case some of you may not know, I have a museum, and I travel mostly to elementary schools, and I try to focus on inner city schools and outlying communities where the kids may not have the opportunity to ever get to go to a museum. So my my grand plan and the reason why I designed this was to literally bring the museum to an elementary school. Now we also go to cities and we do events for the general public, but I kind of focus on that. So thank you for recognizing that. And I agree with you. It gives kids an opportunity to see something that otherwise they may not see. Now back to your original question. Are there any other channels on YouTube that do this? You know, I've heard from a number of young people, well, not just young people, anybody for that matter, that email me periodically and tell me they kind of do what I do, uh, but I don't know, I don't have their, their links um, available. But I will tell you this, that for many of them that watch these, for you guys out there, please, um, in the comment section of this video, please post a link to your videos. Uh, I'm more than happy to, uh, to let, uh, let you kind of use this as an avenue to promote what you do. I do know there's a number of people. I have a couple of people on Facebook as well that do it. Um, I just, right off the top of my head, I just can't remember the links. But I can assure you that if they watch this, they'll post it, and I hope they do. Okay, finally, Amar from, is this, uh, is this, is that an L? Please in Bohemia in the Czech Republic? I guess so. Hey, that's kind of cool. Anyway, Amar, good to hear from you. Hello, Mr. Blessing. I have two questions for you today. First of all, Amar, really appreciate the courtesy calling me Mr. But again, call me George, call me DG. I am not offended in the least, but I really appreciate your courtesy. Who do you think was the biggest competitor of Allosaurus? And which dinosaur is the most common in the Hell Creek? Have a good day, and thank you for answering my questions. Well, Amar, I hope you have a good day as well, and thank you so much for uh, uh, writing to me, and it's my pleasure to answer them. First question, who would be the biggest competitor of Allosaurus? Probably Torvosaurus and um, Saurophaganax. Uh, Saurophaganax, Torvosaurus, those are both uh, really big um, predatory dinosaurs that lived with Allosaurus. Those probably would have been his bigger, biggest competitor. Um, but for a lot of Allosauruses, the only thing they had to worry about was a bigger Allosaurus. So, <laughs> so um, a bigger Allosaurus, a Saurophaganax, or a uh, uh, Torvosaurus, in my opinion, would be the ones that would probably be his biggest competition. Although I will tell you this, I read something about a huge uh, Ceratosaurus that was discovered. A 
a real, excuse me, I just hiccuped, a really, really big ceratosaurus. Perhaps the ceratosauruses were bigger than we're thinking, and they may have been some of the apex predators at that time. As for Hell Creek, uh, for a lot of you, if you don't know, the Hell Creek is a formation that has a lot of late Cretaceous dinosaurs. The Hell Creek is where we get a lot of Triceratops, a lot of Edmontosaurus, uh, a lot of Tyrannosaurus, a lot of raptor material. That's what comes out of the Hell Creek formation. So the most common dinosaur, to my knowledge, in the Hell Creek, now this is solely based off of what I've excavated in my life. It's Edmontosaurus, duckbill bones. I probably, for every one bone from a different species, I probably find 20 duckbill bones, Edmontosaurus. So I'm guessing based on that, that that's probably the most common dinosaur. But again, I can't say with any certainty because I've never, never seen anybody else write about, you know, what, what percentage of dinosaurs come out of there. But I would be, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not uh, Edmontosaurus or some Hadrosaur because they were very common dinosaurs. All right, you guys, that's it for now. If you've got a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page. While you go to my website, click on my catalog. We got some cool stuff. Like I said, this just showed up yesterday. I got a shipment of these. These are uh, hand claws from a Utah Raptor and they come with a base and they are incredibly cool. Also, while you're there, if you're young, you wanna read something cool, read my book. Uh, and when you place an order for it, or if your parents place an order for it, there is a spot where they can leave a comment Ask them to tell me your name, and I will be more than happy, if you want, to autograph the book to you. All right, you guys, that's it. Take care of yourself. Take care of the people around you. Practice your reading, you young people. Use your good manners, everybody, and I will see you guys soon.